Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I'm your host, Eric Smith, and today I'm talking about DC deck building game Teen Titans. This is the latest iteration of the DC deck building game. Just came out a few days ago as of this recording. And uh, I'm a huge fan of the DC deck building games. I'm a huge fan of deck building games in general. Uh, so I just got this. And I've played it once so far, and I want to talk about it, um, obviously, <laughs> really quickly. For those of you who aren't familiar with deck building games, basically, um, there are differences in pretty much every deck building game. They all tend to bring something new to the table. But basically, uh, every player starts out with the same small deck of cards. Uh, it's usually 10 cards or 12 cards, that, and everybody has the same thing. They're, they're weak cards. And then there's going to be either a main deck of cards or a layout of cards that you use your starter cards to you generate uh, income or whatever you want to call it, and you buy more powerful, powerful cards, add them to your deck. So your deck gets stronger as the game goes on and then uh, once you reach the end point and again every game typically has its own type of end point um, usually there's some sort of uh, there's points or something to determine who the victor is so that's again very basic deck building um, start weak build your deck to get stronger at the end of the game, whoever has the most points, or whatever it is, wins. So, in the DC deck building game, everybody starts with seven punch cards. Uh, in this case, you've got this one, and you see it says plus one power. That's your that's the the income or whatever it is you want to call it that you're you're generating. And then, so you start with seven of these and three vulnerability cards which are absolutely worthless. Uh, they just sort of clutter, clutter up your hand. Um, and eventually, as the game goes on, you're, wanna, you're going to want to get these out of your deck because they are so weak. As you're getting stronger cards, there are cards that let you destroy other cards, and these are the cards, these and weaknesses, that you're going to want to destroy. But that's what everybody starts with. Seven punches, three vulnerabilities. And you shuffle up your deck, and you draw five and what you do is you lay them out and let's say in your starting hand you have three punches and two vulnerabilities so that means you have three points you can spend to buy other cards and I have some okay right here in the corner there in that circle you see that three that's the cost of this card so if you have three punches two vulnerabilities you've generated three points of power in this particular game you could buy this card because it costs three so anyway that's the basics this is the layout um, you've got right, this side this is your main deck so that's going to be your thick deck of all the cards and you're going to have five cards that are laid out for people to buy now over on this side this is your super villain stack up here you have kicks which is just a stack of cards that are worth uh, two power each. Um, so they're there. Anybody can buy them at any time as long as they last. Down here you've got weaknesses, which are, again, worthless cards. They clutter up your deck. Um, and at the end of the game, they're minus one point. So you want to get rid of those when you're destroying cards. Weaknesses are the cards you really want to get rid of. But that's your basic layout. So you're going to play, you're going to buy these cards in the lineup to make your deck more powerful. And in this particular game, uh, the end game comes when you've defeated this stack of supervillains. Or when the main deck runs out. Um, and then at the end of the game, whoever has the most victory points wins. And the victory points are the points in, these, in this little star here. So... That's the basics. Um, I covered it probably at about the same level um, when I reviewed the deck building game Forever Evil, DC's deck building Forever Evil, which was a lot of fun. Um, now this is, as I said, this is the fourth 
main iteration of the game. Uh, and it focuses on the Teen Titans, obviously. Uh, oh, and in this particular game, in DC deck building, everybody gets a superhero character, or in the case of Forever Evil, a villain character. Um, but you get a superhero that you're going to play, and each one has its own special ability. Now, in this case, with the Teen Titans, you've got Beast Boy, uh, Red Robin, Starfire, Wonder Girl, Blue Beetle, Superboy, and Raven. Now, if you buy the first edition of the game, you're going to get the special promo card, which is Kid Flash. Now, they each have their own, as I said, they have their own special ability. So, for example, with Kid Flash... Um, now, wait, before I get into that, uh, when you play the game, there's five cards in the lineup that you can choose to buy. In this particular game, when you buy a card, you don't automatically replace it. You replace any empty slots at the end of your turn. So you're basically limited to those five cards, kicks, or the supervillain if you have enough power to buy him. Uh, there have been plenty of times when we've played the game when we've generated tons of, of power and basically bought out the entire line and the supervillain and kicks. And we've run out of kicks and had power left over and there's nothing left to buy. Well, so, that's where we come to Kid Flash. His special ability says, Whenever you buy or gain a card, you may add the top card of the main deck to the lineup. So, Kid Flash is going to give you more options. You buy a card from the lineup, you immediately refill that space. So, say you generated tons of power and bought out... The, you basically can't buy out the whole lineup because you're just going to keep replacing. And actually... The first time I read this, I didn't realize. Whenever you buy or gain a card, so it doesn't even have to be from the lineup. If you buy a kick, apparently, you add the top card of the main deck to the lineup. Uh, if a card just tells you to gain a card in some way, at least that's the way I'm interpreting this. So you could actually build the lineup so it's bigger than five cards. Um, so anyway, that's, that's his power. Um... Another example, Raven. Once during each of your turns, if you control two or more villains, put a superpower from your discard pile into your hand. Um, so controlling a card means you've played it and it's on the table in front of you. You don't control the cards in your hand or in your discard pile. Um, so if you've played two villains in this case with Raven, they're on the table in front of you. During your turn, you can take a superpower out of your discard pile and put it into your hand. Um, and there are all sorts of different types of cards in the main deck. You have superpowers, villains, equipment, heroes, locations. Um, and one of the, or the new, the big new thing in this version of the DC deck building game is the introduction of ongoing cards. Um, now, there have been a few ongoing cards. Locations are all ongoing cards, and when you get a location, once it gets into your hand and you play it, it stays in front of you and its ability is always available. So that's always been the case with locations, and there have been one or two other cards that allow that. But now the main deck is full of ongoing cards. Um, so for example, uh, well that's a location. Let's see if I can find an ongoing card. that I, I grabbed a couple cards to show you just because I don't have any in in this little pile. I wanted to show you some of the artwork and I'll get to that. But let's see if I can find an ongoing... Okay, so here's one. Right there. So this is Lady Vic, right there, and it says, Ongoing, you may discard this card from play if you do plus two power. So when you get this card in your hand, and you play it, you just put it down in front of you, and it's going to stay there for as long as you like. So if you have a really good hand, and you don't need this extra plus two power, you just leave this out. And say, four or five turns down the road, 
you get kind of a bad hand and you could use an extra plus two power you can discard this from in front of you and that's going to give you an extra plus two and there's all sorts of different things that the ongoing cards do and there's even some cards like this cybernetic enhancement that says plus one power for each ongoing card you control so if you have four or five ongoing cards in play sitting in front of you say you have five ongoing cards that are just sitting there you haven't discarded them or anything yet this is going to be worth plus five power so the ongoing cards are really cool cards like this can really give you a lot of power um i really enjoy this game i love the artwork in all the dc deck building games and uh again i wanted to, i just have a little pile here of cards to show you with some of the artwork that i really like and i already showed you the cybernetic enhancement um new teen titans tower this is one of those locations just really really nice artwork uh here's some equipment flight wings very cool blue beetle it's a really good card it's got a defense uh, Miss Martian, I just really, something about maybe the colors in this, I really like that picture. Really nice. Um, again, very colorful. This is a superpower energy absorption. You got Superboy and Starfire there. Really nice. A villain, Grant Wilson. Very cool. Kind of an X-Force Deadpool look, but uh, really nice. And then Ravager, great looking card. Um, Daughter of Trigon, Raven, of course. It's really fantastic artwork in, in all of the DC deck building sets. And that's one of the things I love about this, this game, um, even more so than the Marvel deck building game, which is a lot of fun, and I've reviewed that. Um, and it that has some really nice artwork, but... I really think the artwork in the DC games are is, it's, I think it's cleaner and just really more colorful, a little brighter. Some of the artwork in the, the Marvel game is a little dark. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the supervillains. And supervillains are very tough to beat, which of course is the point. Oh, and one of the things in this game is... Uh, in, in all versions of the DC deck building game, you always have a starting villain. They're on top of the stack. In this case, it's Slade Wilson. But in this one, you have an ending villain. He's always going to be the last villain in the deck. In this case, it's Trigon. And he costs 13, you can see, to defeat him. Um, so you have this stack of supervillain cards. We always play with all of them, which makes the game a little bit longer. Um, I, I think it says normally you play with eight villains, um, but we use them all. There's 12 total. And so the villains, each one has a first appearance attack, or, well, the first and the last, Slade, Wilson, and Trigon don't, but the rest have a first appearance attack. So you're playing, you defeat Slade, Wilson, the next one comes up and everybody gets attacked. In this case, each player puts an equipment they control or in their hand into the lineup. So you're gonna lose a card unless you can defend and avoid the attack. Um, so each, each super villain is gonna have this first appearance attack. And then if you're able to defeat the super villains, they go into your deck just like everything else and they're gonna give you extra power. So, for example, Slade Wilson says, he's an ongoing. At the start of each of your turns, you may draw until you have five cards in your hand. Now, you always draw five, up to five cards. Well, you draw five cards at the end of your turn because no matter how many cards you play, at the end of your turn, you discard everything you've played and anything you may have kept in your hand. So you draw back up to five, you draw five cards. But during other players' turns, or say during the supervillain first appearance attack, you may lose cards from your hand. And typically, if I had to 
discard two cards because of an attack. On my next turn, I only have three cards in my hand. That's what I'm going to have to play for my turn. But if you have this out in play, no matter what, at the start of your turn, you draw back up until you have five cards. So with Slade Wilson, you're always going to have five cards to start your turn. Minimum. So that's pretty cool. And then, again, they all have uh, this guy, Monsieur Monsala and the Brain. Draw two cards, and it's a defense card. But my personal favorite is Superboy Prime. There he is. So if you can defeat Superboy Prime, get him into your deck. Whenever he ends up in your hand, he's going to give you plus two power. That's fine. But it also says, you may swap your current superhero for one outside the game. <coughs> Excuse me. So as I said earlier, everybody gets a superhero that they're going to play throughout the game. Uh, the instructions say that you can choose your hero. We do it randomly. We shuffle up the cards, deal one out to everybody. So when we played the game, uh, I was Blue Beetle. That was my character. It says once during each of your turns, if you control seven or more cards, draw a card. Which isn't a bad, a bad card to have. You know, you might say, but you only have five cards in your hand. Well, you start getting those ongoing cards out there. If you have two ongoing cards on the table, and then you play your five cards that are in your hand, that's seven cards that you control. You're going to get to draw an extra card with Blue Beetle. So you have this character for the whole game. Well, if you get Superboy Prime, anytime you play him, you can swap out your hero for one that isn't in the game. Unfortunately, I didn't get Superboy Prime until close to the end of the game, and I only got to use him once. So... I got rid of Blue Beetle, and I took a random character, a random superhero from outside the game. I ended up with Superboy, and I only got to use him for one turn, because then the game ended. But uh, I would love to get Superboy Prime early in the game, and just keep cycling through the heroes, and just use different powers every time. Um, I don't know if that would be advantageous, I just think it would be a lot of fun. Um, very much like you're playing with a team of heroes. So, all sorts of really great stuff going on in this game. Beautiful, beautiful artwork, as always. You know, I just, I love the artwork on these cards. I've watched quite a few reviews, and I know it, it seems, the impression I've gotten, is people seem to like the Marvel deck building game better than this game. Uh, and I really do enjoy the Marvel deck building game, but the DC games get more play uh, with my group than any other game that I have. Um, it's it's it really popular. It's, it's a very simple game to play. Uh, all you have to do is read your cards and do what they say. Although, I do sometimes have questions. There's a couple things I, I have to look up uh, some of the frequently asked questions online and, and get some answers to because the cards aren't, aren't always perfectly clear and some of them are open for interpretation but not a lot of them. Um, so I really, really, really love this game. Some great supervillains. There's Cheshire, uh, Terra. She looks a little like she's got an Aquaman costume on, but it's not an Aquaman costume. Blackfire. Some great, great, great supervillains. Um, so, I, I guess that covers everything. Uh, obviously, I'm giving this 5 out of 5, um, which I would pro is probably what I would give to all the different DC deck building games. I'm looking over. I've got a pile of them now. So, I now have, I have all four of the main games that that's all. You can just buy this and play it. This is all you need. Um, same with the other three versions and you can mix them together you know you can take the heroes from this and play them with another one of the games you can mix the decks together uh, it can get a little unwieldy so what they suggest if you're gonna do that um, say you grab this you take the main deck take out let's say the equipment and the superpowers from the Teen Titans main deck 
add in the equipment and superpowers from the Heroes United main deck. Keeps your main deck from getting so huge. Um, but you can mix and match everything. Um, there are the two uh, Crisis expansions, which are a lot of fun. Those are cooperative, uh, and you can mix those with any of the different main main games. Um, and even the Batman versus Joker one-on-one -on -one game uh, is a lot of fun. Because this has two... Let's see if this will tell me now, because I'm not absolutely sure it's two... Let's see if there's 36. Two to six players. Two to five players. I'm going to say two to five players for this game. Um, so, but the, the Batman versus Joker is just a two player game, one on one. Um, but again, you can, I think you can mix the Batman versus Joker cards in with your other your other sets some of the things on there are gonna be helpful um, because there are certain mechanics in that game that are specific to the one-on-one -on -one versus mode uh, but anyway all right um, yes all the games or all the expansions and different decks are compatible um, so yeah five out of five absolutely i really love this i can't play wait to play this version again i think this is going to get a lot of play i like the new ongoing mechanic um relatively again locations were always ongoing but this really really throws in a lot of ongoing cards so that's it this has been a pretty long review but there's a lot of stuff i wanted to cover because this is such a fantastic game so much fun um, if you're new to deck building games, I think DC deck building is a decent game to start with because as I said, it's relatively simple, it's very straightforward. Um, <coughs> and of course, if you're into DC, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm actually more of a Marvel fan when it comes to the comic books, but, uh, I love the DC deck building game. Uh, I didn't draw up a rating or anything. Uh, really, when I'm showing you this this beautiful artwork, I'm not going to try to uh, to draw up something. But definitely five out of five for this game, and uh, so that's it. Highly recommended. DC deck building, Teen Titans, brand new, less than a week old, and uh, I say if you're into the games, if you're into the deck building, if you're into DC, pick this up absolutely a blast so that's it for this episode of the low budget review show i'm eric smith and until next time read more books